Remember that the proper CVS examination must include assessment of the peripheral vascular system, both the veins and arteries. If indicated, you may need to assess the abdominal aorta for evidence of aortic aneurysm. Have you been able to observe an abnormal pulsation on the patient's abdomen? Feel for the laterally expansive pulsations on the abdomen. Press your fingertips firmly but gently over the center of the abdomen and move laterally until you can no longer feel the pulsations. If you suspect large vessel disease, you may need to auscultate the abdominal aorta, especially near its main bifurcations with the renal arteries. Then move more distally and locate the femoral artery. This is inferior and medial to the inguinal ligament. Feel for the pulsations of the femoral artery and time this against the auscultated systolic sounds. A delay may indicate coarctation of the aorta. Repeat this test using the radial artery, comparing the timing of the radial and femoral pulsations. Moving more distally now, locate the popliteal pulse deep in the popliteal fossa. Cup your fingertips of both your hands under the knee and bring it to a slightly flexed position. Ensure that the patient relaxes their muscles by you supporting the knee, otherwise tension of the muscles will obliterate the pulsations. Note the presence of an enlarged pulsating popliteal artery, which may signify popliteal aneurysm. A non-pulsating warm tendon mass may indicate venothrombosis or an inflamed Baker's cyst. Now feel for the pulse of the dorsalis pitis. Locate this over the dorsum of the foot, just lateral to the extensor tendon of the big toe and over the navicular bone. Finally, feel for the posterior tibial pulse. Curve your fingers behind and slightly below the medial malleolus. Weak or obliterated peripheral pulses indicate occluded arteries, which may be due to atherosclerotic vascular changes, an embolism, or thrombosis. Compare your findings with trophic changes of the skin and the temperature of the legs. Now assess the venous drainage. Note the presence of varicose veins. Deep vein thrombosis or DVTs are not uncommon. Feel the calf muscles for tenderness, distension, redness and warmth. You can evaluate the integrity of the valves of superficial veins by performing the veno flow test. Identify a prominent vein on the leg and empty it by placing pressure with your fingertips over it whilst dragging them apart. First, lift the inferior finger and observe the vein. The vein should fill rapidly from below. Repeat the test, but this time lift the superior finger. The vein should remain empty for a few moments if the valves are intact, thus preventing backflow of blood. Also, check for the presence of edema over the ankles and sacral area and ascertain whether this is pitting or non-pitting in nature. Finally, as part of your assessment of the health and integrity of the vascular system, you may wish to check the eyes with an ophthalmoscope. The retina should be examined to assess any visible changes to the vessels. This is especially relevant in a patient with peripheral vascular diseases such as in diabetics, in atherosclerosis, and in hypertensive patients. Examination of the eyes is covered in the Neurological Assessment DVD. Remember that in a real patient encounter, depending on your findings, you may want to extend your examination beyond the boundaries of the cardiovascular system. The lymphatic, urinary, endocrine, respiratory and nervous systems may all have a direct or indirect influence on your patient's cardiovascular presentation.